Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody they do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray. Said thank you, Lord. A blessed and pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the 19th day of December in 2023. Outside, tinge of orange, meeting up to a very gray sky. Wind blowing really nicely. See, not so pleasant looking. Temperature, nice and chilly. If you ask me, I think it's 6 or 7 the last time I checked. The cold water bath I have every morning was a little bit colder, praise Jesus. But that cold water bath warms me up so much before and wakes me up before I come online. I hope you're having a blessed and beautiful morning where you are. We're going to kick things off this beautiful, beautiful Tuesday morning with this one entitled, of Day, O Day of God, Draw Nigh. Let's have a listen.
that one, O day of God, draw nigh. Let's continue then getting our words here up on screen for today, December the 19th in 2023. And I could make that happen in three, two, and one. It should be up and running at this point. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and finds you asleep. Words from Mark chapter 13, verse 35 and 36. Using versicle 2 on page 35 of our Books of Common Prayer. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, it can be found on page 37. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever and his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time we have our act of penitence where we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things perhaps that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For our Psalms this morning, we have Psalms 119, verses 49 through to 72. And leading us, using a previously recorded version, is Miss Shira Smith. Let's have a listen. Psalm 119, verses 49 to 72. Remember your word to your servant, because you have given me hope. This is my comfort in my trouble, that your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned from your law. When I remember your judgments of old, O Lord, I take great comfort. I am filled with a burning rage because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me wherever I have lived as a stranger. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and dwell upon your law. This is how it has been with me because I have kept your commandments. You only are my portion, O Lord, I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet toward your decrees. I hasten and do not tarry to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked entangle me, 
I do not forget your law. At midnight, I will rise to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you and those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold and silver. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. We want to thank Mrs. Smith for leading us in the reading of our psalm. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle the Benedictus, which is based on Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through to 79. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebearers, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 to 51. Let's have a listen. A reading of the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 to 51. Who then is the faithful and wise slave whom his master has put in charge of his household to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says to himself, my master is the lead, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves and eat, and, and eats and drinks with drunken with drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour when he does not expect. He will cut him in pieces and put him into hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our portion of scripture this morning, if you allow me a couple of seconds to get back to it, continues to tell us about Jesus and his coming and how the world will be um, when he comes. And he gives us a short parable here, um, cautioning his disciples to be ready for an unexpected coming. Yesterday, when we looked at Matthew chapter 24, 15 to 31, and today we would have jumped all the way to 45, I don't know why this is not coming back up here. It should be up now. We went all the way back. We jumped to 45, coming away from 
they're talking about the signs that would come on the earth. And if we would have read 32 straight through to 39 or verse 40, really, Jesus would tell his disciples that the world would be as it was in the day of Noah. And in the day of Noah, it means that life was centered among normal things, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. In other, words, in other words, life was business as usual, right? And it's interesting because eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage in the time of Noah was also a time that was marked by violence and demonic oppression when people were given over to the things of the world to the point that the Lord decided it was necessary to flood the world and only Noah and his family were saved. So there is a dilemma in business as usual in the world. A world experiencing business as usual does, is not a world that is pictured here as one that takes into consideration the things of God as it should be. And so Jesus cautions his disciples to be ready in verses 40 to 44. He tells them about the parable of two men who will be in a field and then one is taken and one is left. Two women grinding meal, one is taken and one is left. And there's a whole series called the Left Behind series that deals with this particular type of thing. When the rapture comes, who will be ready, who will get to go, and who will be left behind. But it was a caution from Jesus telling them that the master of the household, if he had known the hour the thief would come, would be on watch, and he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. And he is warning them that they need to be ready. And it's kind of a, like a second coming dilemma. Because we're all expecting a second coming, right? But the dilemma in the second coming is that the second coming for most people, well, for all, is coming to is going to happen at an unexpected time. And so you can't be positively predicted. And so the dilemma in that is that since people don't know when it's going to happen, some people get frustrated and stop waiting. Some people wait but become lazy. And some people wait and work and positively stay on the right track and in the right path yes and that's the second coming dilemma the second coming dilemma it is that is that it is unknowable right but the solution is that jesus's followers must constantly be on guard right and in the parable in verse 40 to 44 please take a look at matthew chapter 24 and read that in that parable it tells us about those who would be and would not be ready for the coming of the Son of Man. And 45 to 51 that we read this morning is the parable of the two servants, the faithful servant. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him, right, doing what is right. Jesus tells them, and he tells us, that we must carry on with diligence while the Lord is gone. We must be faithful and wise servant who takes care of the master's business while we await the arrival of the master. While the master is away, it's not time for us to be slacking. While the master is away, we must go on with business as usual, but not business as usual as the world sees it, but business as usual in taking care of the master's business. Jesus promised that all who are diligent will be rewarded for their diligence. The servants serve the master, but the master knows how to take care of and reward the servant. The faithful and wise slaves who the master put in charge of his household, yes, who gives the other slaves their allowance of food at a proper time, blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. And that is supposed to be us. That's supposed to be us working for the kingdom of God. Blessed is the one who gives the other slaves their allowances of food at proper time, who keeps them together, who the master when he returns will find him working when he arrives. And it tells us that the reward will be putting that one in charge of his possessions. But just as there are faithful slaves who the master will find doing what they're supposed to do, they are evil slaves. Mm -hmm. If that wicked slave said to himself, my master is delayed, says verse 48, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves and eat and drink with drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day when he doesn't expect and at an hour that he does not know. And that's the thing. The wicked slave described in verse 48 is doing according to the ways of the world, eating and drinking, taking advantage of other people for their own benefit, not doing the master's work. And when the master shall come at an unexpected time and finds him in his folly, he will cut him into pieces 
put him with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And that is as a result of a part of this second coming dilemma. The attitude that we have while we wait because we are not aware of how delayed the master will be coming. Hmm? It is easy for us to lose faith. It is easy for us to lose heart. It is easy for us to develop an attitude that says, this man is delayed. He probably isn't coming. We're going to live for the world as opposed to continue living for him. Let me explain something to you. I would rather, this is just me. Hmm? I would rather live in this world as if though a God really exists and a second coming of Christ is waiting for us. Yes. And then die and find out that what I was living for in this life is folly than to live in this life of folly and then die and find out that God is real and I would not have done anything to prepare myself. I figure if I live a life that is right and pleasing for God in this world and then die to find out there is no God, I would not have lost anything. But if I live a life of folly down here, doing the things that pleases the world as opposed to pleasing God, and then die and find out that there is a God, the recompense that I will pay is so harsh that I am not willing to take that risk. So I want to be kept busy. The most dangerous lie is not that there is no God. The most dangerous lie is not that there is no hell. The most dangerous lie that Satan tells us is that there is no hurry in making sure we do what is right and put ourselves in the right position in terms of our relationship with God. That's the worst lie the enemy could convince us of, that there is no hurry, that I have time. Because the truth is, we do not know how much time we have before the second coming. We do not know how much time we have to get it right in our own lives even before the second coming. Because remember, our lives might end before the second coming happen. But when the second coming happened, those who would have died in faith will be gathered with him. And those who would have died without faith in Christ will be then sent to eternal damnation where they will be weeping and wailing and the gnashing of teeth. The wickedest lie the devil, devil could ever tell the world is that they have time to get it right. You don't know that. You don't know how much time you have. You don't know how much time between the second coming. You don't know how much time you have before your life ends, even before that second coming. And so what? You can't live like the wicked slave described in verse 48 because you do not know how much time you have. You can't go around beating your fellow slaves. You can't go around eating and drinking with drunkards. You can't go around living a life that is displeasing to the master because you run the risk of getting cut up into pieces and thrown out with weeping and gnashing of teeth. I can't take that risk. I can't. When the master comes, or when the master calls my number, even before he comes at the second coming, hmm? I need to be about the master's business that he has left me for. I need to be doing what is right for my fellow servants for the glory of the kingdom of God. I can't be found to be giving myself over to the pleasures of the world instead of serving the master either when my time comes or when the master comes back. The emphasis of these portions of scripture in Matthew chapter 24, the emphasis of the season of Advent is a sense of constant readiness. And yes, it is a challenge for Christians today. It is. Hmm? We have to be about the master's business. We have to be about treating each other fairly for the glory of the kingdom of God. We have to be about serving the master and not seeking the pleasures of the world. The urgency of Jesus' coming is such that while we do not know the day, nor the hour. We have to be there. I don't know about you. I don't want to be cut up in two. I don't want to be sent to the place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of feet. And therefore, I will strive. I will strive to live like the faithful and wise servant. I will strive to continue to be about my father's business in even the smallest ways that I can. Because being about the Father's business doesn't mean that you have to have your own evangelism ministry. Doesn't mean that you have to start your own church. 
It means that in every aspect of your life, you show the world that you belong to Christ. And through your actions, more so than your words, you draw hearts for the kingdom of God. We must be ready and we must be watchful. And we must not be idle while we wait. We must be about kingdom business. Kingdom business according to the command of Jesus is to preach, teach, baptize, and spread his message. Pardon me, even to the ends of the earth. That is what we should be busy with. Be ready. Be on watch. Because at that day and an hour when you least expect him, the master will come. And blessed is that slave whom the master will find at work when he arrives. Amen. Can you imagine Jesus come and Allah will lock him under the shade of the tree we flourish? Let us continue to profess our faith in the words of the Apostles Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. <coughs> he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and the Pontius Pilate was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sin, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first collet for today is the collet for the third Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Together we say a collet for the poor and needy. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today in our World Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the people of South Africa, and in our ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the Christian Protestant Church in Indonesia. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Reverend Alan Jones, Miss Felice Zelaya, Miss Dijanae Banner, Miss Sarja Madden, Miss Anthea Maxwell, and Mr. Nate Nima. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, 
that you have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers this morning, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Tens, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, and Miss Janet. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna. Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venantia, and Miss Molly. We pray for Miss Amy, Miss Teresa, Miss Althea, Miss LaShawn, Miss Jessica, Miss Celestina, Miss Gloria, Miss Marva, Miss Marta, and Miss Betty. <coughs> Pardon me. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Salome, Miss Sonia, Miss Myrtle. Miss Geraldine, Miss Lorraine, Miss Delvarine, Miss Elma, Miss Maud, Miss Alma, Miss Jean, and Miss Priscilla. We remember and pray for Miss Verilyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonore, Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Patricia, Miss Toya, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Ulichi, Miss Joan, Miss Ismay, Miss Marcia, Miss Joyce, Miss Lenita, Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Velina, Reverend Kilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Marie, Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Reverend Linda, Miss Shelma Dean, Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, Miss Irene, Miss Suzette, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, Miss Julianne, Miss Dillis, Miss Tessa, Miss Megan, and Miss Charlene. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenwick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddie, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. Pablo, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, and Mr. Sean. We pray for Father Constancio, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kirk, Mr. Francis, Sir Colville, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Ambrose, Bishop Nicasio, Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, Mr. Trevor. We pray for Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Mr. Albert, Mr. Richard, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Jervis, Bishop Wright, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieron, Mr. Marlon, Mr. Paul, Mr. Donald, and Mr. Ted. We remember and pray for all persons who would have recently contracted COVID-19. We give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine, as well as thanks for those who care for persons in isolation as we continue to pray for the containment and the elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, as we pray for the infirm, we also pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties, both in public and private institutions, in their various capacities as well. We continue to remember and pray for Drs. Hidalgo, Molina, Monguia, Arnold, Manzanero, Ariaga, Shogreen, Ken, Arana, Joseph, Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, Young, and Quayle. In our prayers, we pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Avell, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Lino, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, Nurse Ashley, and Nurse Cadogan. In our prayers, we say together a call it for the sick. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Miss Elvie Joseph, the family of Mr. William Watson, the family of Miss Kathleen Santos, the family of Miss Myrtle Harris, the family of Miss Derla Gill, the family of Miss Delma Daly, the family of Miss Irma Whitby, the family of Mr. Eldwin Brown, the family of Miss Cecilia Serrano, the family of Miss Loretta Wright, and the family of Miss Sandy Francisco. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray that God's comfort and peace will be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for return and rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Elisa, Tammy, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Ria, Kai, Arian, Tiffany, Jamal, Garrett, Angel, Paige, and Freedom. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Charles S., Derek, Emil, Prince, Charles C., Candy, Sam, Gavin, Christopher, and Kishan. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society. We pray for the poor, for the needy, for the elderly, for persons with pre-existing health conditions, persons battling autoimmune illnesses, persons dealing with lupus, persons battling cancer of their various kinds and stages, persons battling HIV and AIDS, persons battling substance abuse issues and their related ailments, persons battling mental health ailments. We continue to pray for God's protection and provision over you. In our prayers, we pray for the various branches of our security forces. We pray for our government and all our public servants, especially those who traverse the roads for work. We pray for our churches and our church leadership, for the private sector, for all non-governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian need. We continue to remember and pray for the members of our international community. We remember and pray for those affected by the ravages of war and civil unrest. We continue to remember and pray for those affected by the ravages of natural disasters at this time and pray for all persons in their various stages of development and recovery. We continue to remember and pray for ourselves and our region against the threat of civil unrest and insurrection and we pray for protection against the ravages of natural disasters. For the prayers of our hearts, of our tongues will not confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions this morning by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, my brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence as well as in the presence of Almighty God. I apologize for all the sniffling and all the scratchy throat. Let me tell you, um, my sinuses and my allergies began to act up on Saturday evening and I've been battling them. But praise Jesus, we are making progress. Yesterday, I went to the doctor and he gave me, she gave me some wonderful allergy medicine and made me a bit drowsy, slept off most of the day, but it also made me so much more, I mean, I'm able to breathe, my throat is not as scratchy, and while I might have a little lapse here and there because of the talking, I'm doing fine, praise be to Jesus. I apologize again for all the sniffling in the middle of the morning. <laughs> I want to thank you for joining me for morning prayer, and I want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30, and compliant at 9 p.m. to end off our day. I invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are available, and if you can't make it on its scheduled time, Know that you can always revisit the Facebook pages of the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this morning 
with our prayer of dedication followed by the grace to dismissal and then our final hymn. For persons who are in the Dangriga area just before I get there, with regards to service time at the Parish of Christ the King, in the Parish of Christ the King, please note that Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Advent, so we have regular Sunday morning services at 7 a.m. at the Parish Church and then at 9 a.m. at St. Monica's Church in Hope Creek. And then that evening to celebrate Christmas Eve, we have 7 p.m. in Hopkins at St. Um, <laughs> at St. Jerome's Church and then the Parish Church has its evening service at 10.30, which will include the nativity scene and the blessing of the Christmas creche. Christmas morning, 10 a.m., we have service at St. Matthew's Church in Pomona. And that same schedule runs for the New Year's Eve service, which will be the first Sunday in Christmas, as well as New Year's Eve. So I'm waiting for responses on the other churches and their service times that we could publish them for the churches in your area. All right, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with this one entitled, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart and wean it from earth through all its pulses move. A prayer for us to leave behind the things of the world and to be busy waiting for our God. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now.
Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me never good morning. The how everybody they do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another. Another beautiful day I had to get up and pray I said thank you